Christmas. God is good. All the time. A very warm welcome to all of you this beautiful Christmas evening. We are so glad that you are all here tonight. Um, I want to say a warm welcome to all of you, to those who are worshiping with us from their homes, and to those who are visiting with us as well. I pray you feel the spirit alive and well here at Our Saviors. There are a few announcements I'd like to make. One, if you have your cell phone with you, if you wouldn't mind putting it on airplane mode during the worship service, this allows us to have the best signal possible for those who are worshiping with us um, from home this evening. Tonight during worship, we will be having um, communion as well as altar offering. And communion, all are welcome. This is Christ's table. Um, but during that, the ushers will usher you forward. We have not done altar communion for like a year and a half. So um, if you're like me, how do we do this again here? I'm trying to remember. Um, the ushers will usher you forward. Um, this side will go first from the inside aisle. You'll fill um, on your right side first and all the way around. Um, I will excuse each table. Um, and then you go back on the side, and the same on this side. Ushers will come back over here, usher you from this side, filling in the right side, and go back um, to the, on the outside aisle. Also, um, tonight, after the sermon, as we sing, O Come All Ye Faithful, there will be an altar offering, and at that time, the ushers will usher you forward. It is um, this congregation's tradition that four times a year, they bring their offering forward as the, a gift to God um, in a physical way coming up um, towards the altar. And there are three options uh, that you have if you'd like to give at that time. Um, we have to the church itself, as well as a kind of a bonus or a thank you to our incredible organist, Ruth. And then we also have to the Eastern North Dakota Synod and all the work that they do for our church. Um, and so I thank you in advance for your gifts at that time. Just follow the ushers um, and you can bring your offering up um, at that point. Um, trying to think, are there other announcements? Yes, Cassie. That is wonderful. How, 44 coats? Um, think about all those who need a good winter coat this winter. So thank you for, for doing that as well. How many families did we also serve in this community with the Holiday Hearts Project? Was it eight? Or is it five? Four or five this year? And those who participated in that, I want to thank you as well um, for doing that um, this year. All right. With that, we get to worship um, the Christ child on this most glorious, I swear this is my favorite worship service of all year. Um, uh, and so I invite you at this time uh, to rise as you are able as we sing hymn number 279.
leave your darkness at the door. The season of light is dawning. It is a time of celebrating the birth of hopes, the flame of compassion, the cradle of wonder, the bud of peace, the darkness is fading. We are finished with waiting. Bring in the season of light. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson comes from Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, those who lived in a land of deep darkness. On them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder, for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the everlasting father, or everlasting fire. For a child has been born for us. As a, as a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and, and uphold it with the justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here lends the first lesson. The second reading, the second reading comes from Titus. The second lesson is from Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training to us to renounce implicity 
and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that we might redeem us from all iniquity and purity for himself, a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. I'm inviting the kids to please come on up. Merry Christmas, you guys. Oh, let's try that again. Can we do it a little bit more enthusiastic? Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. How are we doing tonight? Good. Good. Do you guys love this service as much as your pastor does? Do you like coming to Christmas Eve and lighting the candles yeah. and getting to sing with the lights off? Isn't that beautiful? And then you go home and a lot of time, are you guys going to go be with family? Yeah, yeah, it's fun, isn't it? So how many of you have a Christmas tree at home? Raise your hand if you have a Christmas tree at home. Five in the house. Five in the house. Whoa. You got me beat too, yeah. Now, when I was a little girl, my favorite ornament was this gold um, angel that was flat and gold plated. And the angel kind of held like a star in its hand. Did anyone else have these um, ornaments? And it was flat and little, and my name was engraved on the bottom. Now, my name is Julie. I didn't get anything engraved with my name on it, right? Because uh, you can't go buy a pencil with my name on it very easy. But this ornament, every year, I could not wait to put that one on the Christmas tree. That was my ornament with my name on it, and that meant I was part of this family and I was part of this tree. Do you guys have a favorite ornament that you get to put up? What's, what's yours, Addison? You and your mom, you have one that you really love? Is there another, anyone else have a favorite ornament they like to put up? That you, yeah, what do you have, Nick? A train. A train. How long have you had this train? A long time. A long time. And every year you put your train up. Yes. Anyone else? All of them. It is fun, isn't it? And every time you take out ornaments, you see memories and you remember Christmases, right? Why in the world do we chop down trees that are perfectly fine being outside and bring them in the house? Why do we put up fake trees in our house at Christmas? Does anyone know? 
Why, why, do you, why do you think? Because you could hurt the trees. Okay, so you are right. So instead of a real one, sometimes we put fake ones because you could hurt trees, right? But why did we start doing trees in the first place? Do you guys want to learn? There is a story, let me tell you. 500 years ago, give or take a few years, Martin Luther, now what is, what is our church? What are we? Lutherans. Martin Luther started our church. Martin Luther, the German leader of the Protestant Reformation, began the custom of decorating Christmas trees. Did you know that? While walking through the woods one beautiful starry night near Christmas Eve, Luther gazed at a large evergreen tree, illuminated. What does illuminated mean? Kind of lit up by the starlight. There must have been some bright stars behind it, and the tree almost looked like it was lit up out in the woods. He was struck by the incredible sight, which reminded him of the night the angels appeared to the shepherds in Bethlehem, announcing the birth. Whose birth? Jesus' birth. Yeah, God's birth. Jesus. He cut down a small pine tree and brought it in his home. I bet his family thought he was crazy. There, Luther started decorating the tree with lighted candles. They didn't have electricity. They put real candles on their Christmas tree. Can you imagine? I, it would. I would be so scared. But if you look at old pictures, that's how they lit their Christmas tree, is by candles. He decorated and he told his wife and children that it represented Christ, the light of the world. From that small beginning, the popular custom of decorating trees spread throughout Europe and later to America, and early trees were also decorated with what I said, small candles, and now we use fancy lights, right? and candies, and cookies, and popcorn, and paper, and glass ornaments. At my house, we have lots of hand-picked ornaments, and gift gifts, and lights, and it's decorated with um, gifts that I've gotten from people like yourselves, as well as friends and family. Our family tree is more than just a decoration. It's full of memories and it shines forth. I love, whenever I look at a house, if I'm going to go live in it, my first thought is, where am I going to put the Christmas tree? Because I want a window where people can see it. It's important to me. This here was made by Adam Aroll. Isn't this cool? And this is your guys' Christmas tree this evening. And I'm going to pull it out next year, too. Now, tonight, do you notice... Who is on top of here? God. And who came? Whose birthday are we celebrating tonight? God. God. Jesus came as a form. God came in the form of a baby, right? An innocent little baby. When I was standing in the back, I heard some voices of little people in the, in the pews. There's nothing like hearing little voices, right? And little cries of babies. And on this night, so many years ago, God came into the world in the form of a baby. Tonight, you're going to put your name on one of these hearts. Why did God come into this world? To save us. And why did he save us? Because he loves us. He loves every single one of us. And this tree is lit up to remind us that God is the light of the world. And God wants God's light to shine through all of you. And God sent Jesus because he loves us. He loves us so much. So tonight, I want you all, just like I had my name on my tree and I loved it, and I still have my name on my tree. Do you guys have any of your names on your trees at home? Yeah, on some ornaments? Yeah. We're going to come up, put your name on this, and then I have a little candy to, to send home with you as well. It might be in the form of a Christmas tree. Wouldn't that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's take a prayer, have a prayer, and then you can come up and everyone write on their heart and put it up on the tree, okay? Dear good and gracious God, thank you for coming into this world as we gather tonight to celebrate your birth. Help us remember that you shine. You shine not only on our Christmas trees, but you shine through each one of us. 
May these kids share your love with each other and with you this Christmas season. In your name we pray. Can I get a loud amen? Amen. amen. All right. So every year we're going to have to add to this Christmas tree. Nick's going to help you. I have a couple pens here. Write your name and put it up here on the Christmas tree. Can you guys do that? And then I have some candy for you, and you can go sit down. Can you try as hard as you can? And when you've got yours up, yeah. good job, Easton. You can come and take your candy. Did you get yours? There you go, Harvey. Merry Christmas. Just, yeah, have Nick. Nick can help you. Yep. Here you go. Merry Christmas. Easton, Merry Christmas. Don't forget your candy. Merry Christmas. All right. Here you go, Lakin. Merry Christmas. Here's another one. Did you get yours up there, too? Merry Christmas. They are a little bit. Yep. Here we go. That's okay. We know who you are on here, won't we? There we go. Perfect. Oh, I'm loving that. Did you put one on, Nick? Okay. Can I help you? Yeah? Okay. Put one right there, Miss Emma. Yeah. There. How about right there? Thank you. Did you get a candy? Did you get a candy? Oh, you got it. Well, now you get two. All right. <laughs> the sea with a voice as big as the sea Shivers in the cold, let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said 
the king to the people everywhere listen to what i say What I say, see the child, the child sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light, he will bring us goodness and light, he will bring us goodness and Thank you, Zach and Nick. That was beautiful. Would the congregation please rise as able? Holy Gospel this evening comes to us from Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It was dark. When you read our text for tonight, you read that it was dark. You and I, we know darkness living out in the country. It was dark in Bethlehem. It was dark in the world around Bethlehem, literally dark as well as figuratively dark. The shepherds out in their fields were certainly in the dark, camping outdoors and taking care of a flock of sheep alone in the cold and dangers all around. They were far from the town where the clean, respectable people lived far from nice houses where people ate at a table with their families and kept kosher kitchens and observed Passover and prayed in the synagogue. Shepherds could not do those things. They slept under the stars in the dark 
and they lived in the dark. They were pretty much ritually unclean, excluded from polite society simply because of the kind of dirty work that they had to do. And the people needed the shepherds. They needed the warmth of the sheep's wool and the meat it provided. Yet shepherds were unclean, living in the darkness. Surprisingly, they were not the only ones. This young, expectant couple who had just come to town were pretty much in the dark, too. Joseph, the carpenter, was trying to set himself up in business and now needed to travel to be registered. He was engaged to a young woman and was hoping to start a family of his own and be a respectable member of their community. And the two of them were alone in the dark that night. Mary was about to deliver a baby whom Joseph had not fathered. So he was understandably angry, suspicious, and in the dark at first. But then thanks to a recent dream, he was trying to accept the odd circumstances. But we can be certain he still had his doubts. And then poor Mary. She had been dragged from home and taken off to a strange town for a government census just at the time of her due date. And then on arriving there, she found herself homeless, sleeping outdoors like shepherds do in an open barn with animals on the night her child was coming. What could be worse? Could it get much darker than that? Well, this couple was about to find out. In a short time, they would find themselves not only homeless, but also ostracized. Refugees fleeing for their very lives into a country where they do not belong. But before that happens, it was dark. In fact, all the people of Judea and Galilee were living in the dark. They lived in a tiny, poor, powerless corner of the huge, wealthy Roman Empire, where they were ruled by a madman king. Herod the Great had jealously murdered his own wife, brother, and sons. Think about who he had to have been. He perversely had partnered with his own sister and his own daughter. He paid a bribe and lied to the emperor to be appointed to his throne. This was not a good guy. Herod trusted no one and was trusted by no one. Herod, a king whose name we say today in the same breath with folks like Genghis Khan and Hitler and Stalin, human evil incarnate. So yes, that being their ruler, it was dark. It was dark that night in the tiny village of Bethlehem. Bethlehem was the ancestral home of the country's once great royal family. Little Bethlehem, known as the city of David, is where the king had been born long ago who founded the nation and led it to its greatest hour. Yet sadly, old King David's descendants didn't measure up. His sons and grandsons and great-grandsons were discredited as leaders. They all turned out to be all too human, greedy and unfaithful and unworthy of their heritage. Yes, it was dark, and in those dark days, through, though hope still flickered. And though people had not yet given up on faith in their God of covenant promise, gloom was still everywhere. That's what happens in this messy world of ours when we focus too much on ourselves. We find ourselves in the dark, and it can seem for all the world as if the wars, rebellions, and terrorisms will never stop. It can seem as if countless new mysterious diseases will keep rising to take place of the old ones that we thought we had cured. It will seem as if the bottom is dropping out of our, 
economy and our pension funds and our investments and bank accounts. It can seem as if once strong nations are hanging on by a thread. It might look as if our leaders can't be trusted. With major political appointments up for sale, yes, even today, it feels still dark. Not just for the folks in Bethlehem, but for us as well as we gather on this dark evening. This is why we gather. We need to hear again the ancient words of the angel telling us to fear not. Those shepherds on the hillside already had so many things to be afraid. So the angel told them, fear not. He brought good news. I could use some good news in today's world, right? He brought good news that into their familiar, accustomed darkness, an astonishing thing was coming. The light had come. Light had come into this dark world. Into the dark night of their souls, God had already come, and a new day was dawning. A child was born, and not just any child, not another child of wealth and privilege born in some royal palace where he'd be raised in a poisoned political atmosphere and become yet another cynical, dangerous Herod. No. Not another child of the priesthood born in some temple parsonage where he'd grow, grow up to learn the ins and the outs of running a smooth, successful religious bureaucracy. No, not another child of power born into some military family where he'd grow up tough and hard-nosed and brutal. These were options then. Any of these newborn babies would have to be feared in a world that is already dark enough. Instead, this newborn baby came in a different way as God's gift to a family and a nation and a world that lived in darkness. He'd be nurtured in the dark. He would be schooled in the dark. He would be spiritually formed in the dark. He would know from the depth of his heart what it's like to live in darkness with fear, with worry and distress, with depression and pain and illness and even death he'd know what it's like to live a human life like you and I. This baby had come into the dark world, but he was not of the world. Fear not, said the angel. This child in the cattle barn is the child of the light. He comes to you from God with news that, that God is good, that God is light. And God wants more for our lives and for our future on this planet than the darkness that we can choose to impose upon ourselves. This child brings news that God has a plan for a different way to live, a way that is based on forgiveness rather than blame, grounded in hope for the future rather than anger nurtured by our past hurts. A way of life focused on others rather than myself that's lived in community rather than in isolation. This child offers grace rather than bribes and spreads joy rather than revenge. He is already among you, bringing you peace, the angel said. And the angel said that to them and still says that to us today. I can't get over when I read this text and how uh, the, the shepherds took off. Tracy, when you planned the children's program and the shepherds took off out of here and everything was falling off of them as they're going on their way. I can't help but think when the angels sang and told them fear not and told them the good news they ran with haste, it tells us. Fear not. 
Go check it out. Go see for yourselves. The light is among you. New starts are possible. There is hope for your future. The joy has come. Amen. Let us sing, O come, all ye faithful. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to please rise as you are able. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray the prayer our Lord taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is set. The congregation may be seated. As I had said earlier in the announcements, the ushers will usher you forward and you will fill in the table from this side over. If mobility is an issue, let the ushers know and I would be delighted to bring communion to you. This is Christ's table. You are all invited to it.
Would the congregation please rise as able? Receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we hear the reading from John 1, I invite you all to please take out your candles and you turn them on by simply twisting the top part of your candle. Um, and when I'm finished reading John 1, we will then do our favorite part and sing Silent Night. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth, we sing.
Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that people around you will be moved by the good things you do to glorify God in heaven. Go in peace. God is with you. We will. Thanks be to God.